How to create a successful relationship. That's the topic we're going to cover here today on Relationship Thursday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook. Get rid of your problems, <laughs> not your partner. Now, what I wanted to talk about, today I'm going to do something very unique. Matter of fact, it's the first time I'm actually trying this. But what I'm going to do is share with you actually from um, another course that I actually took back in like 1993. I was actually going through this. But all the information is still valid. It's still great information because it's like 20 different questions that you could ask your partner. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because I just know if you use this, it's incredible information. And I'm a firm believer in why um, recreate, what do they say, recreate the wheel? I guess is what it is. But anyway, if it's already built, you know it works. Why do we need to go reproduce it? Um, uh, recreate it, not reproduce it, but recreate it. So, um, and I'll share that with you. But first, before you even try this exercise, you have to make sure that your partner and you are, and this is whether it's married, whether you're dating, it doesn't matter. If you do it during dating, then you're going to resolve any conflicts and marriage becomes an a, a easy flow if you actually go through this and doing this in a dating stage, this would be incredible to do this during a dating stage. But if you, if you do it, you guys will get great results. But, uh, but first you have to create an atmosphere where your partner feels safe inside of the relationship. And that's the reason it's more of a committed relationship because a lot of times um, when most people are dating, unless you've made that commitment stage, most people are playing games. I mean, let's call it what it is. Most people are out here dating and, and, and they're just out here playing games. It's when you get to that serious stage with someone and you're talking about taking it to the next level, whether it's we're going to be monogamous or we're talking marriage, then we get a little bit more serious. And that's when this will probably come into play because if you're just in the dating stage, it's probably going to be a waste of your time if both of you guys out here playing and nobody... <laughs> so, but anyway... Uh, but the care atmosphere has to be created. Um, and I got this one actually from Lisa Nichols. Again, if you guys have heard me talk about her in the past, incredible lady. But um, get her materials. But what she talked about is creating a safe zone, a safe place. And that has to take place in your relationship. In other words, I have to know coming into this conversation, there's three things. Number one, I have to know that there's no judgment. So I'm going to be able to talk freely. And for some of you, you got to understand when your partner's talking freely, you need to be quiet. No input from you. What will happen when you start to try to justify? What will happen is they'll, they'll become defensive. You guys will get into a big argument. You won't get anywhere. But what will end up happening is you'll get your partner to a point where they won't come to you anymore about issues and you guys will wonder why your relationship is having issues. It's because the person doesn't feel safe that they can have a conversation with you without you blowing up, without you trying to justify because technically you're not listening to them is what they're going to get from that because you keep trying to justify. So like, you're not hearing me. You're just basically trying to justify your actions. Listen to what I'm telling you. And that's going to create the conflict. So that's the first one. we got to get in where there's no judgment, no repercussions, which means what I share you stays here between me and you. I don't want your cousin, your mama, your brother, or somebody else telling me something I told you and confident. Now, all of a sudden, other people know. No, this is, that's why it's called a safe place. I got to know. I can come share this with you, and I don't have to worry about hearing it from someone else. I also got to know that you're not going to come and keep throwing it in my face and use it against me in later conversation. Now, we all know that happens. At least there's a rumor that people do that, huh? <laughs> keep throwing the same issue back at a person. It's like, no. The only time you could actually bring up an old subject is if it's to uplift that person and to help them recommit to an agreement that you guys have had in the past. And you know, like, honey, remember we talked, we agreed that this is... It's to uplift. This is not to tear down. It's not. It has to be a safe zone. You guys understand what safe zone is. 
So they got to be safe. And then the third one, which she talks about is unconditional love, which you guys know for me, love, there's only one. That's why I don't talk about unconditional love because that is the only love. Because whenever you put conditions, then to me, it's not love. Because condition says, as long as you do what I want you to do, then I quote unquote love you. And the moment you stop, I'm going to take my love. That's not love. You can keep it. Because I'm going to do something that you ain't going to agree with, trust me. I talk to myself all the time about stuff that we have a, we have a conversation going on. So you know the chances of me doing something you don't agree with are going to be pretty good. So, But unconditional love. So it's those three uh, key components. No judgment, no repercussion, repercussions, and unconditional love. And to me, I think like I've said before, I think if you put unconditional at the top, the other things become simple because it's the same thing when I said there's two keys to relationship. One is accepting people as they are, which is my definition of love. That's why I said there are no conditions. If I accept you as you are, that's love. Then you can see how if you have that in place and the other ones become simple, because remember I said the second one is communication. OK, communication becomes simpler if I come to you. And I accept you as you are. Then now when I come to have a conversation with you, I'm coming to understand you, not to judge you. Remember, now we said the three that she was talking about is no judgment, no repercussions and unconditional love. But to me, it's like I said, the two keys. If you take care of the I love you just the way you are, you don't have to change. You don't, And again, I don't say agree. I don't have to agree with you to love you and accept you as you are. But if I accept you as you are, then the second step, of course, is communication. So here, she's pretty much kind of saying the same thing, but she's saying no judgment, which to me is, just what I said, if you flip around what I'm teaching, if I come to you with loving you and accept you as you are, then I'm not coming to you to judge you. I'm coming to you to understand you. So anyway, but I just wanted to share those three because I think they're very crucial, that that's a part of creating a safe place where a person knows I can come in here and and have a conversation with you and it goes nowhere else. And it's because we're trying to make our relationship stronger. And so those have to be in place before we can move on to the exercise I'm talking about that I learned in like 1993. And I'm going to show it to you the book real quick. It's uh, The Hidden Keys uh, to Loving Relationships by Gary Smalley. And the main reason that I, 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 I like Gary Smalley is for the same reason I tell you guys as far as why I don't listen to a lot of different people. I'll hear what they say, but I don't follow them when it comes to relationships because you can learn from everyone. And uh, even if nothing else, what not to do. But for me personally, I it's hard for me to follow someone who coaching who tells me they're in the third and fourth marriages. Not saying they don't have great information. I remember I was sharing that with a young lady one time. She said, well, Ryan, you can't be an author and, and, and a person out here speaking if, if that's your attitude because then people can't trust you or whatever. And I'm like, I told her, if I got a choice to go find someone to coach me in my relationship, now you got all these people out here that's doing coaching. Why am I going to go to somebody who's on their fourth or fifth marriage? Why? Um, matter of fact, I just put that, uh, I was just reading a stat that said 41% um, of marriages, uh, overall, first marriages, usually end up in divorce, about 41%. And then people in their second marriage, it goes to 60%. People in their third marriage, it goes to 73%. So most people, they're getting worse. Instead of, you would think the experience those numbers would decrease like you learn from the first relationship. So your chance of getting a divorce would probably be slim. It's going up. It's at 73% on people in their third marriage. And you're telling me that should be a person I should go to to get my relationship advice. Yes, they have some information and they've learned some stuff. They've heard about some stuff. They haven't learned because learning means you actually implement it. So... I was just telling her, I'm not saying I can't learn from them. They're not going to be my coach. I'm not going to them to get. So, but anyway, um, to each his own. I mean, I told her, you go find somebody that declared bankruptcy five times and then ask them, what should you do with your finances? 
You know what I'm saying? It's funny. You say that all of a sudden people go, you know, and it's like, so, but to justify their conversation, you know what I mean? They'll always try and, and, and but anyway. So, but what I want to do is share with you real quick. Um, what he was saying is, is like, there's three questions that you want to ask even in the beginning of a relationship, you know, like probing. And one of them would be like, uh, where do we want our relationship to be on a scale of one to 10? You know, of course, 10 being the best, one being it's lousy. Now we know the answer on that. I mean, where do we want it to be? You got problems if your partner says, I only want our relationship to be at a six or seven. Okay, <laughs> you already know something wrong with this. <laughs> we know that's not going to happen, but we just saying if, if that did, you already got other issue. And then we go in general, where do you think it is today? And then what can we do over, and the third question is kind of what could we do over the next um, couple of days or next few weeks in order to get it to a 10? Now, this has nothing to do with the 20 questions I'm talking about. This is just the probing to kind of see where we at in our relationship. And um, folks, if you do that, but you got to be willing, kind of what we were talking about before. When you ask where do we want to go, you know they're going to say a 10. Okay. Or at least they go, well, worst case is a 9. Okay. But you know it's going to be a 9 or a 10. Then you go, okay, so where do you think we are? That's the second one. And then the third one, of course, is... So what could we do in the next few days of the week to get it there? See, for most of you, I know that probably scared you to death just right there thinking, I, I don't even know if I want to know the answer. <laughs> you can see how this could actually be, because it sounds simple and it sounds easy to be like, oh, I can go do it. It is simple and it is easy if you have a safe environment. That's the reason I started off with that. You have to have a safe place first, then a person will do this. Because once I ask you, what can we do? You, you have to be again willing to go zip, zip and quit. And, it, and it's not time to justify why you did what you did. It's to hear the person out. What can we do? Because we all come from different environments. We all come from different beliefs. We're going to see things differently. You may have meant it one way. She took it one way or vice versa. He meant it one way, you know, whatever. But the bottom line is your partner didn't take it the way it was intended. You have to be able to sit back and hear them out without trying to give any input. We can get to that later if, if, if you guys want to go into more details where they want to, okay, can I share with you what was, what, why I did what I did? Not at the time they're telling you because now that's a justifying. Now that's the, they need to be able to get, have their conversation and get it out so that you can see where they're coming from, their perspective, how they're seeing it. And right now you sharing why you did it, even if it ain't in agreement with what they, the way they perceived it, Allow them to get that out or they will shut down. Safe zone's gone. You will have problems getting them to open up. And the more times that you do that to them, the more your relationship's going to be strained and, and it'll get to the point where you'll never be able to have these kind of conversations. So, but anyway, what I want to do now and here, what he's talking about, he says, how do you draw out a women's relationship, a woman's, another way to draw out a woman's relationship manual is to use the 20 question method. Now, He's talking about to tap into a woman, and, and that's what this, this particular chapter is about. And build in, in a woman's manual, you know, her love manual, whatever. Now, you guys know, I'm going to read them. I don't care if we're talking male or female. I don't buy into the male man, manual, the woman, the female, the male, none of that. You guys know it's human beings. Because you'll see as I go through the questions, it works on everybody. It's human beings. That's why whenever people tell me, well, you know, this is this is what a man's looking for. My first response is, huh, so women aren't looking for that? Like they'll go, well, men, you know, men are looking for loyalty. Really? So women don't really care about that, right? They go, well, yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, for men, it's not. No, it's human beings. Whatever you tell me, I'm going to ask you instantly if you go, well, you know, because women... You know, they want to be held. They want to be touched. Huh. Interesting. Guys don't. Now, you're going to have some guy that will tell you that. Have a relationship where you don't touch him. You don't hug him. You don't caress him. 
You don't rub his neck. You don't do all that and see if you don't have problems in your relationship. Because he wants it too. He's a human being. We love touch. We love affection. We all do. Unfortunately, most guys have been taught you're not you're not into your emotions. You, you don't care about that stuff. Man, that's woman stuff. I'm going to tell you now. Hug me. Rub my head. Rub my neck. Shoot. I'm in for it. Let's do this. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm going to go through and I'm going to share the 20 questions real quick. But number one, was, would spending more time together help? And again, as I'm saying, when you go through these things, you got to be willing to, again, be quiet and listen to your partner's response. For me, it doesn't matter, male or female. You guys can go through this together. We're not trying to say, well, this is what I think you need, honey, or hubby. Oh, Because, folks, it don't matter. It's human beings again. Okay, number one, with spending more time together help. How much time do you feel is needed and what would be the best use of it? Again, how much time do you feel is needed and what would be the best use of that? In other words, do, you know, because you know how people talk about date night. You need to have that, especially if you got kids, you need a date night. Because if not, you get so consumed with the kids that your actual relationship is neglected. It's going to show up eventually. And that's why, and again, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother time. But that's why I try to share with ladies when they go, ain't nothing more important than my kids. And I go, and your marriage is probably doomed or you guys are already having problems or you will eventually have problems. Your kids are not your priority. Your partner is your priority. And I know it probably made some of you mad when I just said that, but it's real. Um, because if you take care of your partner, your kids are automatically taken care of. Why? You're not going to find two people that take care of each other and neglect their kids. It's not going to happen. You know, because if you are that mom, that your kids are so valuable to you. If he neglected the, neglected the kids, you guys would have problems. You see how that works or vice versa. If he's a dad, that's really Attached to his kids, because folks, again, I say this is human beings. This is not a male or female kind. There are guys that are just as attached to their kids as any woman, no matter what the world tries to teach you. But the key is, he's going to have a problem. So the bottom line is, the kids are not going to get neglected if you guys take care of each other. Because what ends up happening in a lot of relationships when they think the kids are the priority is when the kids go off on their own, now you gotta face the person that you put on the back burners. Think about it. Now you guys are the only two in the house. Now all of a sudden you open like, well honey, the kids is gone, so what are we gonna do Thursday? Well, Thursday is when I go golfing. Well, what about, what about on Tuesday? That's the time I went to the, to, went to the, to the bar with the fellas. Or whatever, you know, I'm just using those examples. But bottom line, and it works both ways again. Like I tell you, I don't get caught in that, that male-female stuff. But the person has a schedule. Why? Because you put them on the back burners. Now, because the kids are gone, you're going to try to make them a priority. No, they're not getting ready to drop everything that they had because now your time is, is, is available. And you guys are going to end up in conflict. And that's why, you you know, it's amazing to hear these people that have been together 25, 30 years get a divorce. It ain't amazing. It's because they bought in that concept. They didn't take care of their relationship at all times and keep it on the forefront. Because what you're doing is you're teaching your children. Like, I remember, um, and I think I shared this. I had a, a family member live with me one time and they got into a dispute with my, with my wife. And I came in. I didn't ask no questions. I just came in and I looked at them. I said, wait, 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 time out. Have you ever seen me dishonor my wife? They said, no. I said, what makes you think you're about to? I said, that door hits you on the butt on the way out. You're not going to dishonor my wife. See, you got to teach them. Man, this this my priority right here and vice versa. Then your kids understand that. Now when they go in relationships, guess how they treat their partner? Because they've learned. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, we in this together. This is you and I. Um, I remember a comedian made that comment. He said, uh, 
me and my wife, he said, uh, we got closer and closer as the kids got older and older because we realized it was us versus them. <laughs> and it's real. Because because uh, your kids, as this same person said, your kids are temporary, non-paying residents, which means eventually they leave. And if everything goes well, they leave in, in about 18 to 20 years. And the person that you're married to, hopefully you're going to be with for life, will still be there but they got neglected, which means they might leave at the same time the kids do. And again, that's just my opinion. I ain't saying right or wrong. But anyway, uh, so that's number two. How much time do you feel is needed and what would be the best use of that time? So we can figure it out. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Are we going to go to hang out at the beach? Are we going to hang in the park? Do some meditating? Let's take some classes together? Whatever. Okay. Number three, what time of day would a 10 would be a 10 to you for us to spend together. So what time of day? Are you a morning person? You prefer the evening? You prefer us to be able to sit up on the couch, relax, watch a movie together? I mean, what 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 is a 10 to you for when we spend that time? Number four, would more conversation help our relationship? Now, <laughs> that's usually, you guys know I talked about the four personality. That's usually going to be the T, the T person that, that'd be like, no, nah, we don't need to talk no more. I get enough. I, the reality is we know conversation is always just what I said. There's two keys, except yours, you are in, in, in uh, communication. Communication is conversation. We need to conversate. That that that's again letting your partner know they're significant, they're important. So, but anyway, but I'm not here to judge. This is you. You guys take this and run with it however you want. But number four would again would would more conversation help our relationship? Number five, what do you consider meaningful communication? This is where we talk about the different love languages. Some people want to be hugged. Some people want to hold hands. Some people buy me stuff. As long as you bring me a box of candy every now and then and some flowers. Some people, I need to hear those words actually come out of your mouth. I love you. Your partner's language. Folks, don't be one of those people that get caught in. Oh, I know what they want. Folks, life changes. We all change. What I wanted today, I may not want tomorrow or I may want more of something else because of where I'm at now, because of certain things have happened in my life, where maybe before hugging and touching hands didn't really matter to me. But now maybe I lost a loved one somewhere along there. And so now I understand what's important in life. And so now for me, holding hands and hugging, which you guys know, I even talked about that me and Terry, because I know she was one of those people. She loved the touching, the holding hands and that kind of stuff. And and so I would do it because I knew it was something she liked. But I always asked that question, could I have done it more? And those are the questions you don't want to deal with afterwards, you know, and it's not a regret. Like I told you guys, I don't live in a world of regret, but it is a question that I threw out there to myself. Like, you know, maybe, you know, could you have held her hands more or something? Because you know that's what she liked and um, that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, don't wait until afterwards, you know, for those who don't know my story, I lost her six years ago to cancer. But I'm just saying, don't have this conversation later. Find out now. And that's really the whole purpose behind all this. Okay, so... Um, so we had number five, what do you consider meaningful communication? We just talked about that. What have I done in the past that might have ruined times of meaningful communication? Of conversations, not communication, of conversations. What have I done in the past that might have ruined times of meaningful conversations? Kind of what I was saying before. If you're not willing to sit there and zip it, allow them to, to, to talk and share and get it out, that could be when this one comes into play, when they're going, this is what you did. We were in a meaningful conversation, but this is something you said or this is something you did or the fact that you wouldn't sit there and let me get it out. But again, remember, this has to be a safe place for all this stuff to take place for us to be able to have these conversations. Number seven, are there some positive things I've done for our time of conversations to be a 10 husband to you, or in this case, for me, you know, I'm plugging and say our wife. Again, I don't get caught in all that. Works both ways. Number eight, how am I doing in the area of meaningful touch? Again, we're getting clear. This is not about how much touching you want, how much touching you need. Honey, what is it? 
What's a meaningful touch? How often do you need that? Do you need a hug every morning? Do you need the hug when I come home from work? Do you need that hug late at night? And I know for some of you males, get over your ego because, again, I know you've been taught all this garbage about not showing emotion and stuff. If you want a successful relationship, go through this and be willing to, to bypass that garbage that you were taught and be there for your partner. Uh, number 10, how am I doing in my verbal commitments? In other words, the things that we've talked about, the agreements that we've made, how have I done on those? Have I stayed in alignment? Have I, you know, I told you I'd take out the trash on Tuesdays. <laughs> have I been faithful to my commitment there? I have I been slipping up? And I'm just using that as an example. Because um, I don't care who take out the trash. <laughs> you guys see, I'm, I, you can call me messed up if you want, but that's kind of the way I look at it. I don't care. It's, it's, let's do what works in our relationship. That's what you do. But anyway, how am I doing in my verbal commitments? 11, how can I make our arguments more of a loving discussion? I've heard of people that um, what they do is whenever they were getting ready to get into an argument, they would take off all their clothes. And so now they'd have to sit there and argue in the nude. And, and both of them, at that particular, I don't know, they probably had a younger age where they were turned on so easily. <laughs> but the bottom line is <laughs> they said it always worked. The conversations were pretty short. And they, and they got over whatever the issue was quickly. Now, I'm not saying you need to do that to overcome all your issues because if you got some challenges that need to be addressed, get those challenges addressed, okay? Because eventually one day, Taking off the clothes is not going to resolve everything because if you get to those points where you didn't take care of things when they were small, they will eventually become big. And then that's when you get to the point where the clothes don't matter. Okay. But anyway, I just thought that was a funny exercise. But anyway, number 12, what are some of your needs that I am doing less than I could to help you grow as a person? Again, let me repeat that. What are some of your needs? Remember what I told you. This is not about you guessing people's needs. You need to know. What are your needs that I am doing less than I could to help you grow as a person? Remember, we're in this together. We're a squad. We're a team. What can I do to support you is basically what I'm asking. Number 13, what would be a 10 evening out together if we had a date night? What would be a 10? OK. Number 14, what could I do to ruin that 10 evening? OK. Is it the way that I always talk to the waiters? <laughs> the way I, I'm rude to everybody? OK. I could ruin the night if that happens, but I need to know. 15, what are some ways I could communicate more effectively? Am I a person that talks holler? That's what I call it. Talk holler to people that always... They can't just have a regular conversation. They always, ah, da, 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 da. woo, I don't even want to talk to you because you can't even talk like a human being. Calm down. Okay, so that's that one. Number 16, what are the ways that I could understand what you go through when you're hurting? That's kind of the analogy where I use when I talked about speaking a person's language where I said, don't tell me you feel like crumbs knocked on the floor because I have no idea what crumbs on the floor look like. But if you told me, I'm a football fan. Hey, I feel like I used to be the star. Now you act as if I'm not even on the team. You know, play me or trade me. Okay, we know that's a serious conversation. Okay, but anyway, if you're hurting, what are the ways that I can understand what you're going through when you're hurting? And that's get better at telling stories so the person really understands how you're feeling. Number 17, what would be a 10 in the way that we make decisions together? Key word, together. That, to me, is very crucial in relationships. I don't get tied into, and, and again, you guys know I get in all these conversations because they, they go into different videos that I talked about. I don't buy into the man in the house and all that. The only time I go with the man in the house is if your family's been attacked from a mental or physical perspective, you need to step forward and say, you got to go through me to get to my family. That's the extent of that man in the house stuff for me. Aside from that is what do we need in order to make our relationship work? And we're using each other's strength. Wherever you're strong at, I'm going to cheerlead you. And whatever I'm strong at, you cheerlead me. 
That is a successful relationship. Number 18, what makes you fearful of me? So you guys can see, you got to really be willing to and not try to justify. Man. And again, those that think that guys aren't fearful of their wife, living, you're living in a naive world. <laughs> it's like, you're living in a book. I'm not saying he's afraid she going to beat him up. Some of that happens too. For those of you who think that don't happen, you're living in a naive world too. But I'm just saying, if you think I said, don't be running around scared of their wife, boy, you've been living in a bubble. <laughs> so, but, and like I can say, it worked both sides. Sometimes it's the mental, but some people do have a physical issue too. But anyway, what makes, what makes you fearful of me? Number 19, what is the best part of our relationship? And when you find that out, do more of it. If a person's telling you, they're telling you, this is this is the best parts of our relationship. I love it when you come up to me and hug me. I love do more of it. You follow me? Whatever it is. And then the last one, what would you change about me if you could? Now you guys know I always talk about in relationship, this is not about changing people. That's why the question says, what would you change about me if if you could? That doesn't mean I'm ready to dump you because you're not changing because those are the deal breakers and, and, and stuff which and, and, the, and the red flags which should have been discussed way before we got to this level of commitment. But um, the other stuff we're just asking, you know, what well, what is it could I have done more of? You know, could I could I spend more time with you versus going to hang out with the fellas or whatever? I'm just used to those because, like I said, I was a person and I didn't run with guys. I ran with my wife. So. Um, but I know guys do it, and I'm not saying good, bad, right, or wrong, but I'm just one that my partner was my best friend, so I didn't need to run and, run and hang out with guys. But um, bottom line here is, is, what would you change about me if you could? And for me, as long as you're not asking a person to go against their morals, their beliefs, their values, folks, you should be willing to make that change for your partner. Um it's amazing how many of us will do more for people on the outside than we will do for our partner. We got to make that correction. Your partner is in this with you to win it all. That's the person you should always be looking out for and taking care of and give them the best you possible. So anyway, I hope those 20 questions is awesome. Use them, take them um, here on the video. Fortunately that it's on a podcast, you could uh, play it back, listen to it again. Uh, to get the 20. But anyway, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It's my opinion. So for those of you who I talked to on uh, Monday, on Self Love Monday, I look forward to talking to you then. And for those of you who are here on Relationship Thursday, I look forward to seeing you next Thursday. And again, remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. Listen to your partner. Talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.